Hey, Buzzheads, Curtis Tucker here, That Buzz Guy, with another episode of That Buzz Guy podcast. I appreciate you guys checking in. I hope you guys have been enjoying all of the episodes and the last one that was the Thunderbird episode. So every now and then I will slip an extra episode in during the week, and it might be one of my adventures or something like that. I hope you guys enjoy that. Give me your feedback. Please go to iTunes. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast there or wherever you listen to your podcast and uh, leave me some feedback and some stars or something there as well. So I hope you guys are watching either on the Curtis Tucker TV YouTube channel or listening here on one of your uh, favorite podcasting apps. Today we're going to be kind of continuing on trying to get you guys online because I want you guys to get started as soon as possible. I know a lot of people are still out of work, and the sooner we can get you guys online and making some money, the better. And hopefully one of these things is going to pan out, and you're going to love it so much you're going to stay at home, and you are not going to return to your job. You're just going to stay home and, and work in your office in your shorts and your t-shirt like I do. So that's, what, that's, that's our goal. Let's get you guys doing that. So today it's all about getting... Uh, we, we've talked about your idea, we've talked about um, what you're going to do, whether you're going to podcast, blog, or video. We've talked about uh, if you're going to do a website, you're going to have to have a domain name, you're going to have to have a name of a company. And now today we're just going to talk a little bit more about uh, what is a website and a blog. And so this is going to be the very, very basics because I have had people tell me that they've gone to um, blogging uh, seminars and classes and basically the people just jump right into you know doing SEO or setting up something on the blog without ever explaining what it is why it is or or even how to start from the beginning so we're going to basically start from the beginning so you've got your domain name and uh, now you need a website and my philosophy is you're going to learn if you haven't learned already on the few episodes that I've done is that everybody needs a website even if you don't need a website, you need a website. So I want everybody out there to get a website, whether it's uh, to do with your business, your side gig, or just your name. Go ahead and reserve your domain name and throw up a website. Um, even if you've got a great social media presence or something like that, you know, people are going to be searching for you on Google. And if they don't find a website, uh, I'm telling you, it's not going to look as professional or seem as legit as having a website. So there's really, honestly, uh, I can't think of a downside to uh, having a website. So everybody needs to get out there and get your website. And uh, so a little bit of difference, um, you know, there's free websites, there's WordPress, there's uh, people that actually code um, their websites, and you can even hire people to code your website for you. And so, you know, the the bottom extreme is using some of the free services out there. The middle ground would be using what we call a content management system, which is a CMS, which is like WordPress, or um, coding it yourself or having somebody code it. So I always go for the middle. It's uh, kind of a lot easier than coding but it does cost a little bit of money and is a little harder to learn. I mean, the, the curve is a little bigger on beginning, but uh, it's the one that most of the people are doing. So I highly recommend eventually getting into WordPress. You do not have to start out with WordPress because I really want you guys to get online. And if you have absolutely no money at all, then you're not going to want to um, start with WordPress. Even though there are some packages out there, literally you can start a WordPress website for about $2.95 a month. Now, they, they may make you pay, you know, a year or six months or something up front to get that $2.95, but even at $5.95 or something, uh, WordPress hosting has gotten pretty cheap. And so, so basically, when we talk about a website and a blog, you know, basically a website is, uh, you know, a bunch of kind of static pages that are online. They're, they're what we call HTML documents and they they basically just link to each other and that kind of makes it what you think of as like maybe a book online it's like a website so you know some of the pages that you would have on a static regular website would be a home page and about us page um, contact page services you know things like that they're, they're pages that you're probably not going to change or update very often because it's just information 
that doesn't need to be changed that often. And so you want people to just be able to go to those pages and update it. So that's a website. A website is just made up of HTML pages. Now a blog, um, well, in some aspects, a blog is a type of website, but really a blog is just an addition to a website. And so blogs started out um, as what we call web logs, and then weblog turned into one word, like weblog, and then they kind of shortened it to uh, we, we, we blog, I think, and then blog. And so over time, it's just uh, turned into a blog, but it came from web logging or kind of journaling online. What people were doing was they were um, trying to, you know, they, they were away and they wanted to connect with family and friends back home. And so they were doing these web logs or journals online so uh, friends and family could keep up with them, you know, from different parts of the world. And so it kind of became popular in the mid 90s. And uh, these different uh, platforms started popping up that help people do web blogs. And one of the big ones was blogger.com. And then about the same time um, as uh, Google bought blogger.com, about the same time WordPress was coming out. And so those were kind of the biggies back in the day. And um, because WordPress was so new back in the day, I did not know about WordPress. And so I was using blogger.com. And so uh, what I was doing now, had I known uh, a little more, a little earlier, I could, I may have been the, the one that could have uh, come up with WordPress because what I was doing was building static HTML websites. And, and with a static HTML website, you really can't have a blog because a blog works on a content management system, which basically is it pulls data from a database. And so, you know, you can input all of that information and it can all be pulled out of it, you know, really fast. Whereas HTML, you know, each page has to be created, you know, one at a time. And so you can't really uh, put a blog. Now, now you can't, it, it just, it's different, two different things. But what I discovered was I could build static HTML websites back in the day. And um, if my clients wanted a blog, what I do is I'd go sign up, I would sign them up for a blogger account and then I would make their blogger blog page look just like their website. And so when they when somebody went to their website, they could click on like the About Us page and that page would look like the home page, but it had different information. It was the About Us information, but then if they clicked on the word blog, it would actually throw them to the blogger.com website and they would be on the blog, but because it looked the same, most of the time people didn't even know and then they, it had the same links or menu at the top and then if somebody clicked on contact it would throw them back to the website and so you so people through those um, internal links uh, could go back and forth between the blog website and the regular website and not even know that they had left the uh, regular website so what i was doing was integrating the blog into the website but not all in one spot on one server, which is what WordPress came out and did. But then they also incorporated the static um, website pages alongside the blogger um, posts. So so basically that's kind of the difference is a, a website is made up of pages and a blog is made up of posts. And the cool thing about posts and using a database uh, with like something like WordPress is as you do the blog post, they're, they're dynamic, they're fresh. Um, Google really loves to read those and index them because it makes, um, you know, Google knows that your website has fresh content. And if, you know, you're trying to rank for certain keywords and you're coming out with new posts that have those keywords, you're gonna rank higher because Google is looking for that fresh information. And then as you come out with new posts on your blog, those are chronological and uh, the newest one is at the top and the older ones kind of start, you know, getting buried. So let's say within a, you know, a year, you might do 200 blog posts and well, and they're, you know, they're really kind of hard to find. But the cool thing about using the database and the posts is you can categorize those by month, by year, by keyword, by subject, 
Um, you know, you can set up categories and all kinds of stuff. So, so if you have the category of branding and then a category of marketing, each blog post that has to do with those subjects, you tag it with those categories. And then when somebody comes to your website, if they only want to read a blog post that's about branding, they can click on that and only blog posts that have to do with branding pop up. So it's a really cool, it's basically a way of using keywords to um, come up with the pages on your website. So that's why WordPress got so popular. And then also, you know, WordPress is, uh, like I say, content management system built on a database. It's dynamic. And so um, when you're looking at a WordPress website, there's the header. I mean, and basically there's the header, the footer, the sidebar, and then there's the kind of the middle area, which is where the content is. And that's really the only part of each page that changes throughout the, the website or the blog. And what's really cool is if you change something in the header, the footer, or the sidebar, it changes that on every page of the website because it's basically drawing the same header to every page. Whereas in the old days when we were building HTML websites, if I had a hundred page HTML website back in the day and like I want to try, try to change the copyright date at the bottom, at the uh, beginning of a new year, we had to go in there and change that on every page one at a time and it was a real pain and and then slowly they were they started coming out with different uh, markups that could help with that but in the beginning it was it was a big pain so i really love wordpress i would highly recommend everybody eventually get to building a wordpress website for your blog or your website but in the case that you are completely broke which i know a lot of you are or you just don't know what you want to do yet um, let's just get you started. Let's get you online. And I've talked about this before. Just go to blogger.com. And um, it's it's just a real, it, it's an older one. It's, it's like I say, it's one of the originals and Tumblr. You can go to Blogger or Tumblr. And those are the old guys. Those are the old. Tumblr is literally a micro blogging place um, and they're in, and it's not, they're, they're not websites. They literally are nothing but a little micro blog. Um, there's really no other pages to that. Um, but again, those are kind of older. They are real easy to use. They're completely free. Just sign up for an account. The cool thing about Tumblr is you can search through all of the Tumblr blogs and look for different subjects. Um, now, the newer things that have come out, and they're kind of a copy of WordPress, but they're free. I mean, there's free versions and then there's paid versions, and some of the bigger ones are Wix, that'd be W-I-X.com, and Weebly, W-E-E-B-L-Y, Weebly.com. And those uh, work a lot like WordPress, so if, you, if you've been able to get around in a couple of those, then you kind of know the basics of WordPress, but Wix and Weebly, um, you know, on the free version, what they do is they might limit some of the things that you can do, and then a lot of times they have their logo somewhere on the website uh, if you're using the free version you can't take the logo off unless you upgrade to the paid version and um, then also sometimes well like on blogger and tumblr and if you're not sure what you want to do yet um, you don't have to connect the website or the blog with your domain name yet just uh, get it out there and start practicing and learn how to upload photos and type and what fonts look like and colors and, and themes and things like that. Just, just play around. So you can play around with that on Wix and Weebly and Blogger and Tumblr and um, and not have to use your own web address. You can park, park your domain name for now and then play around with those. And uh, again, Wix and Weebly are pretty easy. They're almost um, drag and drop type of um, websites. I haven't used them a whole lot. I think I've used Weebly a little bit and... Uh, what, what I've found is with my clients is anybody that started out with uh, a Wix or a Weebly website um, was great for them to start out on, especially because they didn't have uh, much time or the, you know, technically they didn't know how to set up a website. It uh, worked out good in the beginning, but then when they wanted to get a little more sophisticated and add more things to it, they were unable to. Whereas with WordPress, um, WordPress actually, the actual software WordPress is completely free. It's open source. And so um, really the only thing that you have to pay for for a WordPress website is it's, it has to be hosted on a server somewhere, whereas Wix and Weebly, they host 
your website either at wix.com or at weebly.com and again now that's a disadvantage because if you ever want to now and this could have changed but as far as i know if you want to move your Weebly website somewhere else, you can't because it's a Weebly website and it's running off of their theme and and their thing. Same with Wix. Uh, the cool thing about WordPress is you can um, move WordPress anywhere you want. You can uh, start out at HostGator and if you get tired of them, you can move it to Bluehost. And if you get tired of them, you can move it to GoDaddy or, you know, it's, it's mobile. You can take it anywhere. And, uh, and I don't know, again, like I say, I haven't used Wix and Weebly in a long time, so I don't know if they've come up with a way of converting theirs to something else that you can move. But if you move it, um, you know, away from Wix or Weebly.com, then you can't, all the functions aren't going to work because it's not hooked to their system anymore. So, um, so, you know, I'd hate for somebody to spend years and create a really cool um, website on one of those, and then they go out of business and, and you're stuck. So um, WordPress open source, it's not gonna go out of business. Um, because it's open source, hundreds of thousands of people are coming up with uh, cool things to add, like themes and plugins and widgets and fonts and um, just all kinds of stuff. So um, WordPress is just gonna keep growing. It is the number one blogging, blog building, uh, software in the world and a lot of the big 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 names that do blogging and have websites are using WordPress so um, I would highly recommend that um, again advantages of the free ones they're a little easier to use they're free um, the disadvantages you can't move them uh, less capabilities and things like that so those are the free ones and if you just go to any search engine if you go to DuckDuckGo and type in free blogging uh, platforms or websites, uh, even more than what I've mentioned will pop up. Um, I'm just kind of naming the most popular ones, but there are a lot of them out there. And again, uh, they're great for starting out, but do, don't, uh, don't put your entire business website, um, on one of those, you know, kind of weird, you know, somebody asked me a while back, uh, it was a graphic designer and, you know, a lot of graphic designers now, part of doing graphic design is doing web design. So if a client comes to you and they want a logo and brochure and everything else, they usually also want a website. But um, the guy, you know, had just built his own website and was kind of wanting to show it off. And so he said, hey, check out my website. And I went to it and I think it was it was one of the two, Wix or Weebly. And, um, you know, it had the Wix or Weebly logo on it, which looked really unprofessional, especially for a web designer. I mean, what web designer would, you know, just boggle my mind. Uh, Squarespace is another one. Now, Squarespace is not free, but uh, Squarespace is getting a lot more popular, but even um, as popular as it's getting, I would still, um, you know, pick WordPress. But you guys, uh, what you can do is you can go to a search engine and say Squarespace versus WordPress, and that will give you guys, that a lot of those websites will compare um, you know, the differences. Now, beware when you guys go to review websites, um, what you're going to learn is if you get into the internet space is a lot of the review websites are set up so people can make money off of affiliate links. So, you know, they might be an affiliate of Squarespace. And so they're going to not necessarily, you know, tell you something that they don't believe in, but they're, they're doing the comparison of Squarespace with somebody else, hoping you'll pick Squarespace and click on the link and then they get money or, or whatever. So, uh, so be aware of some of the interview or a uh, review websites out there because uh, they may have ulterior motives. You just never know. So uh, Squarespace is another one, but again, I would highly recommend Word, uh, WordPress and it is a combination of a website and blog. And the cool thing about it is if, if you get started and you're, you just want to have a website that has, you know, your services, your picture, your about us, your contact, and that's it, you don't have to, basically, you don't have to turn on the blogging part of a WordPress website. You can just keep it hidden and nobody knows it's there, but it's always there when you, if you want it. So, um, so don't not use um, WordPress if you're thinking you're never going to want to have a blog. Now, the reason why to have a blog is because, again, it's fresh content. It helps you rank better. Uh, let's say you're, you've are you got a website about tomatoes. Every blog post that you add is just another article 
to get um, keywords for um, growing tomatoes in Google. And so what we what we say there's there's long tail keywords which are you know how to plant tomatoes in the fall you know that that's kind of a long you know that that may be super long but that's kind of a long tail keyword well if you did a whole blog post on that you could eventually rank for that so so um here's an example on enid buzz you know most of the articles and press releases and stories are about people from enid or stories or events or businesses all in enid but one day I was a little irritated at uh, Hostess. Um, Hostess, the snack company, had gone out of business, and then another company bought them, and they came back, and they and so the one thing before they went out of business, I loved the fruit pies. I mean, I literally lived for the fruit pies, and then when they came back, they started selling the fruit pies again, but they were not the same, and they've never been the same. So I wrote just a quick little blog article on um, Hostess Pies not being the same. And I posted that on the Enid Buzz blog just for my local Enid audience, not thinking much about it, but um, it ranked, it basically ranks number one if anybody in the world searches for Hostess Fruit Pies not the same. And you might be surprised that a lot, a lot of people actually uh, search for that. So, so that's just an example of how you can take a website add blog posts and start ranking for things that you didn't think you were going to rank for. But the cool thing is if you have Google AdSense or affiliate links or, or different ads on all those pages, you start getting more traffic and that's just more people that can uh, click on your ads. So uh, anything you can do to create more traffic to your website is going to help out. So, um, so anyway, that's uh, why I use WordPress. You can uh, get in and, you know, you just don't, once that's out there, you know, that page can rank for years and years and you can get traffic of it and not ever have to do anything with it. It's just out there. So, um, so anyway, so WordPress is a blogging slash website building platform, again, completely free. And, um, if you, if you want to start out with something different to build your website, that's fine, but I'm going to nag you over the years that you continue to listen to that Buzz Guy podcast until I finally talk you into using WordPress. If you're using something else and you think there are benefits to it, let me know. Buzz at buzzheadmedia.com or you know, send me something on Twitter or you know, one of my other social media places and let me know what, uh, what you're using to build your websites for. Um, the thing about, uh, the cool thing about WordPress is when I first started with it, it really was kind of complicated. I mean, it, it literally in the beginning was so complicated. I tried it for a couple of weeks and felt like I couldn't figure it out. So I actually stopped, went back to um, HTML websites. And um, after, you know, maybe a couple of months, I went back to WordPress and, and slowly, you know, just committed to figuring it out. And I finally figured it out. But now, it's getting even easier. I mean, there's just, uh, they've got a new, a new version w with what they call Gutenberg and, and then the, the plugins and the, and even the updates, you know, back in when we first started, when you had WordPress on a server and they would update WordPress, you would actually have to upload the entire, all the files for the new WordPress. Well, then, then they started having it where all you had to do was click on a button and it would download or upload the new version of WordPress for you. But now a lot of web hosts or WordPress web hosts, it just does it automatically. You don't even have to do anything. Uh, you do have to look out for your plugins. There are still some plugins. Now, that, this, this literally, as far as I know and can think of, is the, the only disadvantage to WordPress is um, due to changes and hackers and backdoors and things like that. They do, and, and just advancements, they are updating uh, WordPress quite often. And so you got to keep up with all of the updates. And like I said, now though, they automatically happen. You know, you don't even have to do anything and they just happen. But every time WordPress updates, all of the plugins that you have uh, installed need to be updated. And uh, so those aren't, at this point, those aren't updating automatically. And some of them, uh, eventually, sometimes, unfortunately, you might get to a point where there might be a plugin 
and it'll tell you, and it's it might say that uh, it's not compatible with the latest version of WordPress, and you may have to think about switching out that plugin and using something else. So be aware of that. Be aware that updating um, WordPress and the plugins is really going to be the only pain. And it doesn't take but a few seconds to even do that. Um, it's just a pain to remember to do it every now and then. So anyway, that would be, you know, probably the only disadvantage, I would say, of WordPress at this point. I might think of something else, but um, at this point... Um, that's all I can think of. So again, uh, more and more web hosting companies uh, back in, I, I say that a lot, back in the day, um, you know, it was just all web hosting. Well, now there's actually WordPress web hosting. And so when we first started, you would, you know, you would um, buy space on a server and then you would all yourself, you would have to upload WordPress to that server. Now, when you open up a WordPress hosting account, and you go right to the website, WordPress is already installed for you, and you literally could start typing that minute and, and you're off and running. Uh, the thing about WordPress is when they install it, it comes with one of the original, really, really generic, basic WordPress themes. And uh, now they are getting a little cooler and a little more sophisticated, but they are really basic and bare bones, which is great to learn on. So if you have never worked with WordPress, and it's installed and you're using one of those um, WordPress hosting companies, you might want to start playing around with the theme that actually is on it because it's going to be a little easier to use. And then as you gain a little more confidence and, and start finding some new themes, you're going to find, um, like I said, it's real generic, but let's say you wanted to um, do a lawyer website. Well, you can go out there and you can find WordPress themes that are lawyer themes and they are literally built for um, law offices. They have like pages for the lawyers and all you do is delete the, the text and the pictures that they've put in there to fill space and then you put your pictures and text in those spots and it makes it real easy. So um, that's what I've said before is um, web design has become a lot easier than it was back in the day. Now a lot of business owners, you know, like a plumber, he's not gonna wanna sit down and uh, probably design his own website. So there's a lot of opportunity in web design and you don't have to charge a huge amount of money because like I said, it's not a whole lot more than opening up a WordPress account. WordPress is already installed, finding a theme. It might cost you 29 to 49 bucks. You put the plumbing theme on there. You plug in the plumber's logo, his photos, his text, his contact information. You hit upload and, uh, you know, in a day you've completely done a plumber's website. So uh, it's become a lot easier. The plumber could have done it himself, but, you know, like I say, they're not usually going to want to sit down and have to figure all that out. So um, so I would use uh, WordPress, uh, tons, thousands of themes, um, paid themes versus, and I'm not going to get real deep. Right now I just want to get you guys online, so I'm not going to get super deep into Build, actually building the website and the and the things that you need to do. There will be an episode where I'll go through everything that you need to do on the first day of building your website because there's a whole checklist of things you need to do right when you start. But um, picking a theme, uh, there's going to be free ones and there's going to be paid themes. Uh, some of the free themes are really great, really cool. Um, but they, uh, sometimes, you know, it might be a kid in high school that's, um, you know, loves to code. And so he, he might build a couple of really cool themes, but then he runs off to college and, you know, doesn't have time to do it anymore. So it, so those themes never get updated. And if they're free, you know, they're, you know, there's no expectation that he's going to keep them updated. And then when WordPress continues to update, their platform, eventually that theme might not work with uh, WordPress anymore, or somebody may find a backdoor, which would be a hacker, and if they find a backdoor, then they're gonna be able to hack um, the website. And don't be surprised if uh, your WordPress website or blog gets hacked at least once. Uh, it is kind of a pain. Make sure you have some backups, backup, 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 backup all the time and uh, you won't have to worry because you basically just delete, you know, a couple of days worth and reinstall and you should be fine. So, um, so 
I don't highly recommend uh, free WordPress themes, but again, there's a lot of them out there, uh, just $19, $29. The thing about paying for it is the person or the company like Theme Forest or you know some of those companies are, they're gonna give you support, especially like for a year after you buy the theme. And then um, if they ever decide to discontinue the theme, they're probably gonna tell you and send you a message that, hey, we're no longer going to update this theme. And usually you're pretty good for, you know, six months or a year after they discontinue updating it. Um, and the thing, what you'll learn too about web design and your website is, um, you're probably gonna want, you, you just change it, you know, um, it's like clothes, uh, styles change, colors change, fonts change, um, the look of websites change. And so, you know, probably every two, three years, you're probably going to want to update your website anyway. Now I say that, and I've got some websites that I haven't updated in a lot. I've even, I think I've even got a couple of HTML websites floating around out there somewhere, which are crazy to look at uh, because they uh, are awful. So, and, and I do not, I'm telling you, do not have a HTML website. So um, use, and so uh, with WordPress, um, um, I'm, 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 I'm trying to think of the word responsive. Uh, you definitely 100% need a responsive theme. And the really, really super duper cool thing about that is a responsive theme allows you to build the website on your computer so it looks all cool. The logos up there looks cool. All your photos on the homepage look cool. Your font looks cool, sidebar, footer. And, but then what happens is if it's responsive, if somebody comes to your website on a mobile device like a phone, it basically rearranges and reformats the entire website so it looks really good on a phone. Now it, it doesn't look, you know, it's not arranged the same as it is on a computer, but it's really easy to read. It all works the same. And you can tell if a website is responsive or not because um, when you go to it, everything's kind of like a big long line and easy to read a website that and if you go to an old HTML website on a phone, the website looks really tiny on the phone and it's like the whole page is, is, you know, in, in your phone screen. And then you have to, you know, enlarge to read the font and uh, there's really very little scrolling ability, but there's a lot of right and left scrolling because you had to enlarge the page and it's just a big mess. And so, um, uh, definitely 100% get a responsive theme for your WordPress. And it's, you know, I think it's like JavaScript is built into the website. So it automatically knows if somebody's coming to your website on a computer, on a, an iPad, on an Android something, or on a, uh, a phone. And uh, what you may not know, and the problem that we had, again, way back in the day was... Uh, websites all, they look different on different browsers, on different computer systems, on different um, phones. Uh, but now because of WordPress and making them responsive, most of the time websites are going to look pretty much the same no matter what device uh, you go to, other than they're going to be arranged a little different. You know, with an iPad, it's almost going to look like a website, but it might rearrange a little bit different. So anyway, so responsive theme, uh, 100%. So anyway, um, web hosting is going to be a big deal with WordPress. You've got to find, um, there's two things that you have to have to have a WordPress website on the internet. Uh, one of them is a domain name and number two is a web hosting company. And basically a web host is just, it literally is just a high powered computer sitting somewhere that has, you know, T1 or T2, or it has, you know, communication lines hooked up to it. So a lot of information can go back and forth between people that are surfing your website and your website. And then, and what I've noticed is there, and then there's shared hosting and, um, and dedicated hosting. And if you have shared hosting, you're basically sharing kind of the IP address or, the, or a section on a server with a lot of other people. And what happens there is if your website gets really popular, you're going to be fighting other people for the bandwidth. And uh, what happens on Enid Buzz a lot is if I get a lot, a lot of people clicking on an article link from Facebook, um, it basically crashes 
my website, which is kind of a pain. So uh, hopefully that's not anything you're going to have to worry about in the beginning. And you can always change that, move to a dedicated server later. It is going to cost more. It does cost a lot more, but um, something to be aware of and think about in the future. Uh, so anyway, but uh, web hosting is basically just a computer called a server that uh, your files sit on. And then when a person uh, on a computer has a browser comes to your website, it loads it and then they can see it. So you got to have that server. Like I said, it can range anywhere from $2.95 a month to, you know, $29.95 a month. And basically, um, you know, a huge amount of different prices in between, but it, and that all depends on, you know, how much hard drive you're going to be using, how many domain names can you install on that one account, how much bandwidth, uh, does it have backup capability. Um, I would recommend that you uh, get an account that has email because, um, you know, so like um, cartoons.com, I've got Curtis at cartoons.com. So you, you probably, if you're going to be running a business or side gig, you probably want to go ahead and get a um, email that matches your domain name. I mean, not a, not everybody does. Like, um, I've got cartoons at gmail.com, which I also use. I've got Curtis at cartoons.com, and then I've got cartoons at gmail.com. Now, there's nothing wrong with using uh, your name as a Gmail account. Uh, it just, you know, comes off a little more professional and a little cooler uh, to use. Um, and, and it's not as complicated to set those up as it, used to be. Um, so we, and then we'll go through email, you know, eventually on another episode as well, but you might think about getting an account that does include email. And if not, it's no big deal. You can go to, uh, that server or, uh, another hosting company like GoDaddy and you can set up your email there. So, um, your domain name, uh, registrar and your web hosting company do not need to be the same person. So I think I've said before that all of my domain names sit at godaddy.com because I get bulk discount and all most of my hosting is done over at HostGator. And so it doesn't matter if they're on um, with two separate companies. Now, if you go to somewhere like Bluehost or HostGator or even a GoDaddy, a lot of times they will give you a free domain name for your first year. And then after that, it's going to cost you, you know, like 12 bucks a year or something for your domain name. So, you know, that's kind of cool. You save a little bit of money. So if, if you're really strapped for cash, going to get a uh, hosting for $2.95 a month and a free domain name, but, but <coughs> uh, I do not have a cough or a sneeze button. So I apologize for that. Um, but, uh, so anyway, so get you, um, uh, find a good, good web host. Um, you can go again to some websites that have, uh, reviews and say, you know, HostGator versus Bluehost. Now, Bluehost is one of the oldest WordPress hosting companies and highly recommended by WordPress. But, um, I just happened to end up at HostGator and have been really happy with them and eventually have moved most of my websites over there. Um, but again, you can go to review sites and find out what other web hosting companies are out there. And, uh, you know, there's probably going to be some cheaper ones, but, uh, and you know, the, the one thing is a lot of them will say like 99.9% .9 uptime that you don't really have to worry about back in the day. Um, we did have a lot of downtime. If you had websites on a server that had a lot of downtime, it could get pretty frustrating to have your website down for a day. Um, but that, that doesn't, that rarely happens anymore. Everything's become pretty reliable. There's a lot of backups, um, that keep things going. So, um, you know, check into that, uh, backups, uh, like I said, backup, 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 uh, check in, see if they allow you to have subdomains, which we can talk about later and, uh, things like that. And then, um, now if you know, for sure in the beginning that you are going to start an e-commerce website. Basically, you know, you're going to be selling something from the website. Um, that changes everything that, you know, we'll have, I'll have an episode where I, you know, go into, um, into depth about that, but you can definitely do a, a shopping cart and a store through WordPress, which I do at curtistucker.com. If you click on the shop button, that's just a woo, W-O-O, -O, WooCommerce uh, plugin 
that I use, and I have that WooCommerce plugin connected to a company called Printful. And so when you guys order t-shirts from CurtisTucker.com through the WooCommerce uh, pla you know, plug-in, it sends the order to Printful. They print it and ship it to you. And so, uh, so all that can be done through WordPress, or you could go the Shopify or Etsy route where you don't build a WordPress website. You just, and I've, I've opened up a store on Shopify before. I actually just recently shut it down, but um, Shopify gives you the tools to actually kind of build your own website, which is really a store. The problem with that is they kind of look like stores. You don't have a lot of freedom to make it look like a, a website. It's, it's basically kind of a store, but it makes everything, everything's kind of integrated and it makes it a lot easier. And then Etsy, kind of the same way. Now I think Etsy uh, setting up an Etsy, Etsy shop is, is free and they just charge you uh, each time you sell something where Shopify has a monthly fee. So again, we'll get into e-commerce and all that stuff later because those are uh, definitely, definitely more complicated, but not as complicated as back in the day. I mean, um, you know, 10 years ago, if somebody had said, hey, build me an e-commerce website, I'd have said, no, no, I'm not the guy. But uh, today it's uh, gotten pretty easy. So um, you guys you guys can figure it out. Uh, what I want you guys to do is get started. That's why um, I'm going to go ahead and say you guys can start with blogger.com because I just want you to get online, get something online, start uploading, start learning about words like FTP, upload, optimization, search engine optimization. Um, when you have photos, and, and again, we'll get more into this on a different episode, but... Um, you know, a lot of people take photos with their iPhone and it might be, you know, three megabytes big. Well, you don't want to upload a three megabyte big photo. You need to learn how to optimize that photo and get it down to smaller DPI, a smaller size and, you know, get it down to like, you know, 14 kilobytes because one of the important factors, and then again, that'll be a whole nother episode is the factors of, how to, you know, one episode might be how to make your website load faster. Well, faster loading websites is one of the key ingredients to ranking higher in Google. If your website takes a long time to load, number one, people aren't going to wait. There is, there's, there's literally a time limit where the majority of people won't wait longer than so many seconds. And if your website hasn't loaded, they back, they go back and they go to a different website. And every time they come to your website and only stay a couple of seconds and go back, that Google knows that. Google keeps track of that. And that's why they uh, don't rank you very high because people are leaving your website after just a few seconds. So you want your websites to uh, load really, really quick um, just for the people coming to your website and for Google. So we'll talk about that, how to optimize photos. But this, my point was, this is stuff you guys need to be um, searching for and studying and finding more videos and you know, the, the thing about a podcast, if you're, if you're just getting all my information through a podcast, it's going to be hard to teach you guys a lot of this because I can't show you on the podcast. And then on the, even on the YouTube video, it's just me talking. I don't have the video pointed towards my screen to show you guys. So, so I'm not going to be able to like show you step by step. Now I'll try to describe and tell you, but I'm trying to give you guys the basics with a lot of detail so you know what to do and what to go search for. But I need you guys to take, you know, take some of this on yourself and start learning this. And if you, you know, if you really want to sit at home like I do in your shorts and your sneakers, and be able to do anything that you want and have the freedom, it's going to take, you're going to have to learn. You're going to have to learn how to, you know, build the website and keep it updated and keep it running and all that stuff. And again, with all the tutorials and blogs and things uh, that are online, it's not going to be that hard for you guys to figure it out. Look, I figured it out. And as I always say, if I figured it out, you guys can figure it out. So anyway, get after it. Let me know if any of you guys are uh, just starting. I'd love to look at uh, some of your websites or your blogs and see what's going on. I know um, there are a couple of you that have contacted me and already asked me some questions. So go ahead and uh, I'm right now I'm still using buzz at buzzheadmedia.com if you want to ask, ask me some questions or you can hit me up at 
um, Twitter, uh, Enid Buzz on Twitter, Enid Buzz on Instagram, or just find me. Go to Facebook and type in that Buzz guy or Curtis Tucker, and you'll find me, and you can send me messages there as well. But anyway, I appreciate you guys. I hope everybody is doing good out there. I uh, really want to motivate you guys to start, uh, whether you start a full-time business or you just start a side gig, um, you can definitely make enough money with a side gig to buy yourself a Stratocaster or go on a vacation to uh, Florida or Disney World. So, um, you know, get after it. Get get going. Uh, that side gig might turn into, uh, you know, a big company and you may be able to hire the entire family, you know, and not have to go work for somebody. So that is my goal is to get every one of you working for yourself, working at home and not having to answer to a boss that, uh, you know, so I've had a, a fun time, you know, working for myself. So let's get going. Everybody have a great uh, week, day, weekend coming up out there. And uh, I will talk to you guys next week. See ya.